Now, here's a very, very interesting question to ask yourself. It's a very funny question as well, and it's a question that sort of refuses an answer. It's a question where you have to really contemplate and sit down and think deeply about for hours on end before you can get any answers. And even, not even hours, I'm talking about hundreds of hours, or maybe even years it's going to take for this answer to be fully answered. And that question is simply, what is my passion? What is my life's calling? What is the thing that I'm going to devote myself to? And what is exactly that thing where I'm going to pour in all of my effort into one thing that I'm going to become so good at it that I can start to produce prolific work that's going to benefit other people? What is that thing that I wish to master? And what is that one craft that I'm very, very naturally gifted at? That I'm willing to spend more time mastering that thing. That I'm willing to pour hours on end into that one craft. So that I can become so good that other people could not ignore me. What is that one thing? Well, I've had the fortune of taking a lot of bumps on on a steep road of self-discovery. To have learned a little something that I can share with you people. I'm not claiming that I have everything figured out. But there's a distinction that has to be made between... Do you love the work itself or do you love the idea of the craft? So so often when we're trying to, trying to find a passion, for example, you want to become a painter. You want to become a lawyer. You want, you want to become a university professor. You want, you want to become uh, an archaeologist or astrophysicist or some stuff like uh, a journalist or something like that. You have an idea in your mind without experience to back you up. We talked about this before in other videos where I talked about how young people couldn't really foresee the future because they have such limited life experience. They don't exactly know what they want. They don't exactly, there's no gauge. There's no, there's no standard that you can compare to. All you have is a blank, blank slate. All you have is your present experience that you couldn't really make sense of because all you have are ideas that are not grounded in reality. How do you know you're really going to enjoy journalism? How exactly do you know whether law is the right career for you? How do you know whether you should go into politics or not? How do you know maybe a university professor isn't for you? Or maybe in a case of a more artistic career, maybe sculpting just isn't for you. Maybe painting, you're not exactly inspired by any, any, any paintings but you just love the idea of being that tortured, romantic, painting artist genius. Or take, for example, my personal favorite craft, my favorite craft of all time, which is writing. Well, a lot of people have ideas of, let me become a good writer, but once you, a- once you actually sit them down and you ask them, how much have you written for the past maybe three, four weeks, they- they're going to tell you, I've written um, you know, maybe an essay or two, maybe a paragraph or two, then you start to question, really deeply question, are you actually in love with the craft or are you in love with the idea of the craft? Do you love the hours spent at the desk or do you just love the idea of strolling around looking like a writer without actually wanting to jot down uh, words on a page? How do you distinguish the two? How can you distinguish idea from the actual craft? Are you in love with the work itself? Or are you in love with the idea of work? Now, that is one crucial distinction that we have to make on the journey that we have to all have to make towards the journey of self-discovery, towards the journey of really finding out what is this passion that we're after? It's this key distinction between the idea of the sort of work that you're going to be doing and sort of the practicality of the work. Are you actually down for the practical work or are you just lost in fantasies so for that i'm going to ground all of what i've said in this uh, little article that i've written on medium.com in which if, if you haven't checked me out on medium i would really appreciate it if you do so uh, it's in the community post section uh, readers are pretty hard to gain on medium.com and judging by the fact that i'm a very small writer on medium which is a uh, posting uh, articles and all of the articles are available in the community post section but the bulk of my work do go towards writing so i would really appreciate if you can check out some of the writings but today i just have a little article i think it might be fun and relevant to show you guys to indulge to indulge me in some reading uh, to sort of show you guys what self-discovery and finding out a passion really entails i'm not saying that i have everything figured out 
but this is the stuff that I've learned throughout my own journey. So here we begin. Some people ask, ask me, why the hell do you spend so much time writing? In one simple phrase, for the damn of it. Why do we go on searching for underlying stories where the obvious answer is right in front of us? But there still lies a fair point. We love to tell the tale as to why we do what we do. Humans are natural playwrights, crafting experiences into comprehensible stories so that we have something to fall back on if identity crisis decide to pay a visit. At times, this autobiograph, uh, I mean, at times this autobiographer could be helpful. But at other times, the stories can cripple our journey towards finding our life's calling. Take writing, for instance. An amateur loves conjuring up tales about what it may feel like to finally be a writer. They dream up, they dream up vision of, they dream up visions of a concentrated man with messy hair and a beard ungroomed, typing away on a vintage, vintage typewriter. Each word, each stroke, were imagined as stepping stones towards a piece of flawless work, a piece of art that may soon be published and appraised. If the old typewriters do not suit his fancy, the tortured genius might excite him. A frail wretch, I mean, a frail wretch rummaging through pages of his scattered notes, wallowing in ailments alien to others, every hour, every day, under seeming torment, he would always be on the verge of writing a masterpiece so original and bedazzling, rendering his insanity worthwhile. Or else, if he doesn't want to be a wretched artist, the calm thinker archetype might suit his tastes. A man dressed in an English teacher's sweater, strolling along the lakes of Walden, whilst contemplating the outline for his essay. His cottage will be hidden in the woods, his temperaments as deliberate as his walks. Maybe that's what a writer should be like. Hermetic, but wise. How excited and agitated the young artist is, having entertained all fantasies of being a writer. How ready he also is to fit himself into one of these stories, where he now gets to be a hero of his own play. Here lies the problem. Most do not find their calling because they haven't... Uh, yeah, no, most do not find their calling not because they haven't bumped into the thing. Their failure stems directly from finding the wrong thing. Why? Because amateurs are too easily fooled by the picturesque fairy tales. Years would go by. They pride themselves in the image of being the writer, whilst at the same time abhorring the thoughts of putting words down on a page. Here's a real-life example of how this might play out in a context outside of writing. Two years ago, I became interested in computer programming after playing Watch Dogs. The succinct lines of code, along with all the impossibilities performed by Aiden's phone, captivated me to learn the mechanics of C computer codes. Weeks into the process, I've imagined myself as that of a genius hacker. Bringing down networks with just a few lines of commands, I was mesmerized by scenes of the mind for days on end. Until my friend Thomas shook me wide awake. Hey Rob, have you been doing any coding lately? Uh, no? No? Do you actually love coding or do you just like the idea of coding? Think it through, man. At that moment, I've realized the follies of my own undertaking. Coding was the last thing that I would wish to do. I have committed to the wrong craft. Same with writing, is it not? Are you indeed in love with the hours at your desk, jotting down remarks that you may soon regret or maybe disgust you? Are you prepared to temper yourself with patience as, to, as you realize that success is not an overnight process? That there lies no tale of the romantic genius behind bundles of failed drafts. Most importantly, is there actually a force within that's propelling you to write? To put forth a piece of your soul, where all could soon benefit from your words. Finding your passions is like eating a bowl of mixed salad. Our tastes are not defined by what's left in the bowl. They're defined by what we have already devoured without a second thought. If you truly have found your life's calling, at times you wouldn't even be aware of it. Your muse certainly wouldn't spare a second for you to fantasize about what it may be like to be a writer. You would already be in your, in your room, typing or scribbling away. All that's in front of you is the art that you cherish, the craft that you love. Years would soon elapse. One day you'll wake up with a sudden realization 
you have turning to that sweater wearing writer. And it is no longer just the story in your head. You lived and breathed, breathed the identity through committing yourself to the art, to the craft itself. You no longer have to entertain the idea of an artist. You are an artist. Yes, you can bask in that smugness for a little while, but you won't dwell there forever. Your sincere love for your creation would return you to your seat. Where more hours would pass, more pieces will be produced. Those fantasies of the amateur, they're no longer relevant. So that's just an essay that I really enjoyed writing. Uh, really enjoyed putting forth all those ideas to sort of communicate the idea of sometimes it's not about the idea that you have about a piece of art that defines your true calling. Like the analogy that I gave, a bowl of salad. Our tastes are not defined by what's left in the bowl after you've eaten much of the salad. It's defined by what we already devour without a th second thought. What do you already cherish? What, what is the thing that you already are inclined towards doing? Give up the fantasy of, I wish I could be something. What is that thing that you already know intuitively that you really, really want to do? If you don't know what that thing is just yet, go do some soul searching. Go experience stuff. Go try stuff out. Screw stuff up. And at the end, I wish every one of you can experience what I'm, what I'm experiencing right now as I'm writing, as I put pen down on a page. As I work on my novel, I woke up at 3 a.m. today and I just wrote for a, a good two hours. I wish everyone can experience, experience that. And I really want this piece of message to get through. Finding your craft is about falling in love, falling in, falling in love with the craft, not the idea of the craft. And writing, for me personally, it's such a personal endeavor that uh, I couldn't dream up a scenario where I'm not waking up every day and jotting down a few remarks. I couldn't imagine a world where writing is absent, where words are absent, where I'm dwelled forever in my own imaginations without words, and uh, I couldn't bear the thought of that. So therefore, words are a part of me now. Writing is a part of me now. And uh, I'm really excited to get this no novel published. Um, it's going to be a, it's 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 such a big thing, such a mammoth of a project that, God, there's so much stuff in there that I wish to share with you, but I really couldn't, not yet. You'll see when I get it finished, and uh, we shall talk then. But for now, hope you guys have learned something from that essay, from that or, or from that oratory oratory narration of the essay and I hope you've learned something new today and this is Robin from the Quirky Inquiry and I shall be signing off right about now.